Hey guys, Sock here from Socky Tech, and in today's video, we'll be sharing the first 14 things to do with your brand new and shiny iPhone 14 Pro Max. These tactics are going to get you the best settings to get you started and maximize your ownership. So let's dive in and get started right away. All right, so the very first thing that you want to do with your iPhone is to make sure that the battery on your brand new iPhone is not defective. So what you want to do is you want to go to your settings, then you want to scroll down a little bit, you're going to see that battery option right here. You tap on it and you're going to see this option known as the battery health. Tap it and make sure the maximum capacity is 100%. And over here it says peak performance capability. Now another very important thing right here is the optimized battery charging feature. If you disable this, your battery is going to age quicker. If you enable this, your battery's aging is going to slow down. You can read the text underneath here, but it is in fact a very important feature for people that are going to keep their iPhones for a long time. Now, in my case, I'm just going to keep this enabled so the charging is optimized and the battery gets a longer age. Just remember, when you enable this, the phone is going to charge a little bit slower from 0 to 100. But the biggest thing here is the fact that you have these just like mine, if you see anything else here, like 90%, 95%, you're better off just returning that iPhone and replacing it with a brand new one that says 100%. Now, when you go back here, one more thing you might want to do is there's a battery percentage option here. You can see on the top, we have a battery icon. If you enable this, you are going to see an actual percentage inside the icon that says right now that my battery is 79% charged. So these are some important things to do with the battery. Now let's move on and talk about the always on display. Basically, when you turn off the phone, and let me turn it on, this is the normal lock screen. After a little bit, what happens is it dims away and gives you this always on display. It's a lighter version of your actual lock screen. Whatever you have in the lock screen is going to dim and appear to be an always on display in this nice and cool format. So what you can do with this one is, because this will waste some battery, you can turn it off. So let me go inside, I'm going to go to my display, and you can see that we have the option to turn off the always on display. So when you have this enabled, and then when you go to the lock screen, notice when I have the lock screen, it is going to wait a little bit, but it's going to completely shut off before uh, after the lock screen times out. So that is going to save you some battery. If you want to prolong your battery life, you want to disable always on. If you want the luxury of that always on display, just keep it enabled. So that is a new feature on the iPhone 14 Pro Max. All right, so let's move on and talk about the dynamic island and all its features. Before we continue, just a quick word from our sponsor, Pitaka. Pitaka makes one of the highest quality cases I have ever seen for an iPhone. This is the case I'm using on my iPhone 14 Pro Max in parts of this video. All their cases are made with aerospace grade aramid fiber, which is five times stronger than steel and also five times lighter than steel. One of their cases is for the absolute minimalist. That's the Mag Easy Case 3. It's ultra thin, ultra beautiful, and ultra lightweight precision engineer to fit your iPhone. It is 100% MagSafe compatible, making it the world's thinnest MagSafe compatible case ever. Also using unique fusion weaving techniques, their cases offer unique styles and colors, as you can see. They also have a second case, the MagEasy Case Pro 3, which is designed for defense and protection. It is still made out of powerful aramid fiber, but it is going to be slightly thicker and padded, designed to protect your iPhone 14 Pro or Pro Max with built-in air pockets that absorb damage in case of a fall. It also offers excellent grip and has that gorgeous aramid fiber texture. And just like their minimalist case, it also has a raised camera lip for additional protection for the highly valuable camera array on the new iPhone. All these cases come in biodegradable packaging which causes no harm to the environment. So that's always a plus. Links to buy these high quality cases are going to be down below. Now the next thing I'm going to quickly talk about is the dynamic island. You don't really have to do anything with it, but I want to make sure you know how to use it. 
So for example, if I were to launch the music application, okay, let me just launch the music application here, and let's just play some music. So I'm playing music right now. I've got my controls right here as usual. Now when I go out, it is going to go to the dynamic island. You can see we have a little music player here, and we have the album art right here, and this is going to work with many system applications. The first thing you can do is you can just tap on it, and it's going to bring up the app, or you can press and hold to get a quick preview of the app and get some controls, and also you can swipe it away, all right? Now, as you have that playing in the background, let's say you, you launch another app that is supported by the Dynamic Island. So now what you do is you, let, let me just go to the clock application. Uh, clock application right here. Clock application. Let me start a timer for 15 minutes. Now I'm going to exit this, and you're going to see the Dynamic Island splits into two islands. And over here I have the timer. I can press and hold to get a quick look at it and also uh, get some controls and then swipe it away. Or I can press and hold on this side and that's the music player. So we have two apps uh, in the dynamic island and we have the controls on the top. If I were to go back here and just press and hold on it or just press on it, it brings up the app. If I press and hold and if I cancel the timer, you're gonna see it's disappeared and now we have just one app running in the background. So that's basically what the dynamic island is going to be and it's gonna work with a whole bunch of applications. One example again, if I launch the camera, you're gonna see when the camera is active, you'll see that green dot in the middle of the island which indicates that the camera is currently being used. There's another indicator that's gonna work for voice. So that's the video. If I tap on record, you can see the dot is still there. Okay, so that's that. So let me press and hold on this one. And let me uh, disable everything. If you get rid of the applications, the dynamic island goes back to its static mode. Now one more thing that's very important is going to be the race to wake feature. So let's say, now let's assume your always on display is turned off. Then what you can do is you can enable this other feature known as race to wake. So if I go to my display, should be right here, tap on it, scroll down, and you can see I have the race to wake enabled. And then basically what that means is when the phone is turned off sitting on the table, if I want to quickly glance at it, I can just raise it and it's going to wake up. I can glance at it and then move on without having to unlock it and then it's going to just going to turn off as you can see. So you can either have always on or race to wake. You can also have both of them enabled. Only thing is when you race to wake, you're just going to see the lock screen. Let's log in. Boom. Now let's talk about the camera. You do have a powerful camera. You got to know how to use it properly to get the best out of it. So here's the camera. When I launch the camera, I got my photo mode. I've got my video mode. However, by default, the video is high definition. Look on the top here, 30 frames per second. That's 1080p at 30 frames per second. If I want to change these settings, there's a couple options. One, I can go to settings and I can scroll down a little bit and I can go into the camera. Where's that at? Right here. And the first thing you want to do is you want to enable the grid. That's for composition. So now when I launch the camera, I have a little grid, these lines, that's going to allow me to better align photos and videos and they're going to look better. Okay, so that grid is going to help you for composition. But look at over here. We have record video, record slow motion, and record cinematic video. Cinematic video is this one right here. I'm sure you guys have heard about it. It blurs the background and focuses on people's faces. So from here in camera, you can change the resolution of the default recording for your camera. So if you want 4K at 60 FPS, you choose this. If you, have, if you want to do enhanced stabilization, you enable this, which I highly recommend. And if you want HDR video, you enable this, which I also recommend. Now, when I go back into the camera, let me show you what's happening. Let me just exit it. Now, when I go to video, it's going to default to 40K at 60 frames per second, so you're getting the best quality. Also, you can tap here, 
and it switches from 4K to HD, 4K to HD, and if I tap on the number, it switches from 24, 30, 60. Okay, you can make the modifications here, but the default values are going to be picked from here. Same with the slow motion video. I recommend to keep it here. And also with the cinematic, you have four options. As you can see, 1080, 4K, 4K. I would just go with this one or this one. Not a big fan of 24 frames per second. But if I were to use it here, look at this. When I go to my camera, cinematic, by default, it's 4K at 30. But again, I can tap it to change it right here. So that's fantastic as well. And one more thing, you can always go to the camera settings and you can pick a default photo style. So look at this. If I tap on this guy here, I have a standard, rich contrast, vibrant, and warm, and a couple other cool. So once you pick one of these guys, it's going to default to that. I would just go with rich contrast, tap on use rich contrast. Now when I launch the photo, uh, it is going to be by default in the rich contrast mode. All those things are modifiable. If you tap this arrow, you can change it by tapping this button here and just swiping back and forth. But again, you can set the default values right in the camera settings. All right, let's move on to the next tactic. Now, another great feature that works much better on the iPhone 14 is Let's say you were on a website, let's say you were at Google and searching for an image. Let's just take this image as an example. And let's say you want to extract the text from this image. There's a couple things you can do to easily extract the text from an image. The first thing you can do is actually press and hold on an image, actually press and hold on an image. And then you can tap on show text. When you tap on that one, it brings up the image in focus and it shows you all the selectable text by, by tapping this button right here. And then I can copy that text and I can paste it into a notepad or whatever. Or if I go to messages, I can just tap it right here, press and hold, paste. So that was extracted from this photo. The other thing you can do is you can actually press and hold on the photo, on the text, and it's going to activate it right here. Look at that. I can actually select the text now and copy it from here and I can even modify the area that I want to uh, select, copy, paste, whatever. And then the final thing you can do is if you were to save this photo, let me just save this to photos and then go into my photos. I can also do the same thing right here. So I have that icon that I can press. You can see or I can just, you know, zoom in on press and hold and it activates it. So it's very precise and you can do a lot of different things. All right, so that's the text extraction that you can use anytime, anywhere. Of course, the next thing you wanna do is you wanna personalize your lock screen. It is now customizable. So let's go in there. You go to the lock screen and all you do is press and hold. Once you press and hold, you will have to unlock it with your face ID and then you're gonna see this option here. Now you can swipe back and forth. That's the collections. You can tap on customize and then you have three widget areas. You can tap on this one, pick a widget that you want. Let's just tap on weather for now. So now I'm seeing the weather conditions on the top here. I can tap on this one. I can pick different clock styles as you can see and change the color. All right, that's gonna be up to you. And then what I can do is I can add widgets into this area. Tap on add and I can pick little widgets from here and there and just put them right in here. So let's uh, do this one, this one, and this one. Now I have four widgets in my lock screen and I can also change the, let me see, color, swipe back and forth from deep purple to gold, all these preset values. Tap on done and then you can set this as a wallpaper pair by tapping this option or you can customize the home screen separately. That's just a home screen. So that's good enough for me. Let me just click on done and now we are good to go. Also, press and hold, swipe over, click on plus. And then you have all these options. You have the featured options, weather options, emoji options, and a bunch of collections and colors. With the colors, if you tap on one of these guys, you can change any color that you want, intensity, 
can be changed as well. Widgets can be changed as well. You have three rows. All right. Just so you know, I'm going to cancel this. Let me show you one more thing. You also have astronomy. When you go into a particular collection, you can swipe through different available settings. Just so you know. Then you click add and you're good to go. So that's the lock screen customization. We're just going to go back here and move on to the next tactic. Now, one more thing that's very important has to do with your security. So you do want to go to your settings and I want you guys to go into your face ID and passcode. You're going to have to put your regular passcode to activate this menu and then you'll see this. Now here, I like to enable all these options. You would have to put your password once you enable one of these options. So enable them all so you can use Face ID to unlock the phone, to make purchases in iTunes, to use Apple Wallet, and also to auto fill password fields. And also very important, you want to set up an alternate appearance. If you wear wigs, sunglasses, hats all the time, you want to put those on and set another Face ID. So when you try to log in with a hat on, the phone doesn't get confused and does recognize you. Now, if you're going to be wearing a mask, you can do face ID with a mask by enabling this feature. All right. And then you're going to have to rescan your face for full recognition. So that option is there as well. And then if you scroll down again, for security purposes, enable these two options a hundred percent. They're pre-enabled. So that's good. But basically to use face ID, face ID requires attention. So let's say you're sleeping and your girlfriend grabs your phone and scans your face while you're sleeping. It will normally unlock the phone and then she can see all those nasty messages you sent to the other girls. But by having this one enabled, it is going to require that you actually look at it. All right. So nobody can trick the phone while you are asleep because the phone will know. And finally down over here, it says allow access when locked. So in my case, all of them are enabled. So let me show you if I go to the lock screen, for example, I have access to all these controls over here that you may not want. All right. So somebody can come here and turn on and turn off various things. So if you want to make sure people don't have access to your stuff in the lock screen, go back in here, scroll down and make sure that these things are in fact disabled selectively. So wallet, for example, I would want access to that because I want if I want to pay somebody with the Apple wallet, it's going to ask for my face ID anyway to make the transaction. So that should be safe, but you might want to disable the control center, the notification center, so people cannot see your notifications. Again, it's up to you what you personally feel comfortable with. Now, one more quick thing that I want to talk about is if you go to your settings, if you go to display, I like to set up bold text. If you don't have this enabled, the text is thin and maybe hard to see. Some people prefer it nice and bold in your face so you can see properly and clearly. So make sure you bolden the text if that's an option you're looking for. All right. So that brings us to the end of this video. If you have any questions, comments or concerns, drop them down below and check out the Pitaka cases down below as well. These are some beautiful, high quality cases.